So today we have seen proof um, for the first time in the world that you can actually make meat from cells taken out of the cow but not um, produced inside of the cow. And um, you can make a hamburger of it, cook it and eat it and have it um, taste reasonably similar to a, uh, to a hamburger from a cow. So that's, that's exciting, that's new and that's, that's an important step to take and to work from that and, um, and move forward. And it's, it's important also to um, have gotten the message out that we really need to come up with an ethical and environmentally friendly way to produce meat. We use cells from a cow. Um, we harvest them through a harmless procedure. Um, and they have cells, we all have cells in our muscles that are sitting there waiting to repair an injury. And they have the capacity to multiply. So we uh, take them out of the cow, expand them in the lab until we have 40 billion cells. And then these are particular muscle cells, so they can form muscle cells after they have expanded. Um, and we do that in a particular way so that they form real muscle fibers, and that's the basis for our meat. So if you have a lot of those muscle fibers, we can basically make a hamburger out of them. We started to work on this in 2006 with all the fundamental um, uh, uh, questions and the fundamental processes uh, to be developed. Um, really making the hamburger took two years uh, of development. So um, in the early stages we were capable of making the fibers um, and then we needed to transform that to cow cells um, and we needed to grow enough cells to um, develop those fibers very, very consistently so that we can make, could make a hamburger out of it. And that took about two years. So the aim is to, of course, make a consumer product out of it to solve all the issues with um, our current meat production. That will take at least another 10 years because there are a lot of um, things that need to be improved. For instance, the color, um, and, uh, but also scaling up production. So it, it's going to take some time. Um, and depending on how many people are going to work on it, it may take 10 years, maybe even earlier, but um, 10 years is probably a good guess. But for me, there are three major reasons why, we, why I think we need to do this. Uh, one is that demand for meat worldwide is going to increase. Um, the World Health Organization predicts that in 2050 there's an appreciable increase in demand for meat, mostly in BRIC countries. And we are not going to match that demand with current production methods. It's just not going to happen that the, the production right now is sort of maxed out. 
So that's a, that's a serious issue, probably the most serious one. Second, we by now know that livestock actually produces a lot of greenhouse gases, so um, current production methods are bad for the environment. And that's another reason why we need to come up with alternatives. And, and third, there are animal welfare issues that we all sort of know that they are associated with uh, meat production, and if you can uh, relieve some of that, those issues with alternative methods of producing meat, that would be a great benefit too. As far as I can see, there are no health concerns uh, with cultured beef. Um, it's actually exactly the same as the muscle cell in a cow that we normally eat. So there are no, you know, on top of the health concerns with just eating meat, there, there are none with this particular type of meat. I have talked to a fair number of farmers. You know, we will always need farmers, so we're not going to put them out of business. Um, they see the issues with current meat production uh, probably better than we do because they see sort of the economic uh, turndown of, of this whole industry. Um, so they also welcome alternatives. And of course, they are, you know, they are very proud of their product, and rightfully so. Um, so they, they, they challenge me and say, you know, see if you can match that, which is a, which is a great challenge. I have been waiting for this day for the, for the last two years because this is an idea that came up uh, two years ago and we finally got the funding for it and worked very hard, had lots of obstacles. Um, so when it's finally there, you know, this, this, is, um, this is a proud moment. This is really something uh, exciting. So Sergey Brin is funding this for, because he has the same um, concerns about meat production that we have. Um, and he's also driven by the environmental issues and by animal welfare issues. So he uh, just looked around who is doing res research in this and who is trying to develop this, so they came to us, and uh, fortunately, and he offered to uh, fund it. Um, so, so far, uh, and we have asked for funding to produce that first hamburger as a proof that it can be done so that we can generate sufficient uh, interest in, uh, in the public. And, um, and that's exactly what he did. The current hamburger um, has uh, costed 250,000 euro, which is quite a lot. Um, and um, we have looked at uh, models coming from companies who do large-scale cell culture. And they entered our numbers into their models and um, we you know, we came up with a calculation that um, we could produce this with the current technology without any improvement whatsoever um, for about $70 um, dollars per kilo, which is already pretty good. Um, so we expect that um, with further improvements we can get that further down and then we can scale it up. It's, it's a very good feeling at, at this stage to uh, have been able to launch it um, and get everybody's attention because that's, you know, we need to get out there that, that there is a sense of urgency to solve the problems with, uh, with meat production and, you know, going on a world stage or getting the opportunity to, to go on a world stage and, and get this me message out and that there's also possible alternatives for it is really an important um, achievement and I'm very happy that we, will, that we have been able to achieve that today. Okay, everyone sitting here with bated breath is dying to see what's underneath the cloche, so can you do the honours and, and lift the lid on your creation? I can. No. Okay, now obviously in its raw state, it looks quite like a traditional bur burger. To this burger was produced in about three months. Three months, and you would say it's... Which is faster than a cow, a a hamburger. Of course, we did some testing before, and we did some tasting before. OK, we can see the burger cooked now. Happy with both sides of that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> right. I have to say, working very well and under pressure, Richard. Top, top marks to you. <laughs> yeah. I'm used to that environment, Ooh. right. Eats chicken. Fish, we know there's a huge problem with, with fish supplies around the world. Could that be developed in the future if there was an appetite right. for it? Uh, absolutely. This is a technology that can be transferred to other animals as, as long as they have these stem cells in their skeletal muscle, uh, which most animals do. It can be transferred to um, other animals like fish, chicken, other, um, um, you know, lamb, you, pretty you, much everything. You told me earlier that this actually albeit a new technology. What did it taste like? Mm. 
I was expecting the, the texture to be more soft. There's really a bite to it. Um, and there is quite some flavor with the browning. And I know there's no fat in it, so I didn't really know how, it's, how juicy it will be. Um, but there's quite some intense taste. It's close to meat. It's not that juicy. But um, uh, the consistency is perfect. Does it taste like <laughs> <laughs> The texture, the, the, the mouth feel has a, a feel like meat. The, mm -hmm. you know, what Hani was just saying, the absence is, I, I feel like the fat, you know, like it's, 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 it's a leanness to it. But, but the bite, you know, feels like, uh, you know, a conventional hamburger. I am here in London because I uh, just tasted the first cultured beef burger. The best thing about the cultured beef burger, in my opinion, the thing that made it most similar to real beef was the texture. It, the, you know, when I bit into it, I was, you know, one of my biggest concerns was that it was going to be unfamiliar and soft and, and more kind of like tofu. And, and, and that's because of what Mark had told me, you know, that Mark had said years ago that they were challenged by, to, to, to mimic the, um, the texture of, of real meat. Uh, and so I was very, I was impressed with the, the bite and, 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 and how it, it, it did have a kind of density that was familiar.